Thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm going to present very, very quickly, because we've lost so much time, on uh, the changing context. Uh, and uh, this would be looking at slide two of the increased emphasis on gender in the World Bank. Um, the World Bank uh, right now has, in its new funding for low-income countries, IDA, uh, a new commitment and an increased commitment to the quality and the quantity of addressing gender empowerment and gender equality and women's empowerment in its lending and uh, grants portfolio. Uh, the Water Global Practice, um, just to, to give you a feel for the activities that we do, invests an average of $4 billion a year in six regions of the world. And we're looking at, uh, as a water global practice, not only water supply and sanitation, but hydropower, water resources management, and irrigation. Um, we have also transitioning, we're transitioning from the water and sanitation program to uh, the new GWSP, which is um, a more integrated uh, trust fund that is looking at uh, all of these subsectors of water, not only water supply and sanitation, and has a, a key pillar of social inclusion where we pay attention to gender issues uh, for the non-lending aspects of our work. But we also pay close attention to the intersection uh, of, 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 of identity with race, uh, religion and uh, disability and remoteness, and so really trying to understand the, um, the the way in which social inclusion works. In the next slide, I'll just say a few words about the strategic objectives of the World Bank Gender Strategy. Uh, in 2015, the World Bank introduced a new gender strategy. The gender strategy is interpreting the 2012 World um, Development Report on Gender Equality and Development, which highlighted that as they reflected on gender across the board, that there were areas where in spite of economic growth, inequalities persisted. And the new gender strategy is taking these sticky domains where things were not changing in spite of growth and saying we're going to focus on this as an institution. And all our global practices all of our uh, thematic groups are going to make a contribution to these four areas which have been seen to be where inequality persists. So one of the first areas is number one, improving human endowments. That is the area of health and education, that there remain uh, gaps between men and women on, in, in their health, especially maternal mortality, but also in education and, 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 and progressing into the higher levels of education. And uh, the second area of, 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 of gaps is the quality of jobs. Women are increasingly working across the world, but we've observed that uh, the quality of those jobs and the earning is much lower for women. And when it comes to uh, control, ownership and control of assets and women's voice and agency, representation in parliament, representation in different service delivery um, sectors and development sectors, there still is a, a, a gap there. And so these are the four strategic objectives of the gender strategy. So they don't necessarily speak directly or obviously to the water sector. So I'll just spend a few moments in the next slide to describe how we are working as a water uh, G GP to interpret uh, these strategic objectives in the water sector. First of all, at country level, we're trying to align closer to the country partnership uh, that exists in, in engaging the World Bank with the country. We're also trying to really examine what has worked in the past. And so we've done a recent exercise of reviewing good practices to see what has worked and what can we do more of. We're also making sure that we partner because, as I mentioned, the strategic objective of increasing women's control over assets and improving the quality of jobs, you can't do that unless you engage the private sector. So uh, leveraging partnerships with the private sector, but other sec sub, uh, sectors and, and groups as well to Im implement this strategy. Um, and, this, and the other aspect is a much closer tracking of the, the substance of the gender work. On the next slide, I'm going to begin to describe some of the ways in which we 
implement the strategic objectives. Um, and how uh, some of the examples of projects that, that actually capture this. And, and these are projects that are not necessarily uh, new because we wanted to see the results of the project. So we went back into the archives and looked at the older projects. So the first one of improving endowments, uh, health and education, a, a good example is the Ghana Community Water and Sanitation Project. This project, like many other investment projects, looks, tries to help the government to translate policy and they, they, they had developed a new policy, uh, the, the National Community Water and Sanitation Strategy. And the, 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 the idea here was to help achieve the objectives of providing water, but also uh, increasing um, uh, the health benefits of the sector. This project focused on schools as well as communities. It focused on behavior change. Uh, it had very clear measurement of how much do people recall in terms of the hygiene behavior change um, uh, messages? Um, and it also uh, achieved a very high level of, um, of, of, of women's participation in the uh, water and sanitation committees. So in a sense, the water GP is doing projects like this that incorporate school wash and are able to demonstrate if there are strong measurement uh, tools in the project framework uh, in which ways they are contributing to the overall gender strategy. I'll go briefly to the next slide, which looks at the area of women's voice and agency. And I'll touch on two examples of projects that capture this effort well, and it's the kind of example we want to scale up on. The first one is the Peru Sierra Irrigation Project. And this project um, uh, begins with a situation where you see that 75% of management positions in all levels of public and private enterprises are held by men. And there's many cultural restrictions on women's participation in water management. Although women are doing a lot of the work, they don't really have a voice and they're not earning the income. Um, when the project began on the coastal region of Peru, uh, it was very successful. So they decided, let's go to, uh, the, uh, to uh, the, the, the Sierra region and introduce uh, this project to increase productivity there. And what they found was that the meetings were held in Spanish instead of the local language, Quecha. They were, um, women were not participating because of the rules for the water users associations. And, and, and generally, uh, their, the, women's particip participation was very low. Um, so through a very interesting engagement of men, in increasing their understanding of the importance of women's participation and building the women's participation and empowerment through exchange visits between uh, the women in the in inlands to, the women, to see how women play a leadership role along the coast, uh, there was a, a process of empowerment and increased participation was, was achieved. Um, to, to address the issue of um, access to land for, for women, land was set aside uh, at, uh, for women's uh, irrigation act activities so that they would have direct control of the income there. The other example is in India, the Uttarakhand Decentralized Watershed Development Program, which actually um, is focusing on, on water resource management. And here again, we're seeing examples of how women's voice through the institutional structures that were put in place uh, were strengthened and enhanced through the, through, the, through the project. I'll move quite quickly now to the next project, uh, another example from India. And, 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 and this somehow demonstrates the, uh, the strategic objective of increasing um, uh, control uh, over assets and, and, and increasing economic opportunities for women. And this particular project had a very strong link with the social unit of the bank. And they not only implemented water projects, but in the process had a very uh, deliberate attempt to reach the scheduled castes and tribes, um, ensured women's representation, um, that they, in the project management unit that was implementing the project, they ensured that there was a balanced participation of women and men, and, were, and they measured the number of women months 
um, and, and the amount of, uh, of earnings from women uh, from the implementation of the project itself. And I think I like the, the point here that even as the project is being implemented, not only um, uh, the results at the end, but the process itself, because it's capital intensive, it creates an opportunity for women to uh, increase their, their, their economic standing. And, and, and this is something that uh, we're, we're trying to do much more of. Um, Self-help groups and link to microfinance institutions as well, so that the groups that were managing water had members who were also linked to these self-help groups, which, which would actually reinforce payment for water services, but also improve uh, with, with this increased amount of income uh, be able to pay for water, but also uh, invest in projects that increase their their um, th their income overall. The project also had very good measurement, and I think this takes me to my last slide, um, which which sort of summarizes the new approach that the bank is taking to uh, support teams to uh, scale up um, gender in their work, moving away from uh, a ticking the box exercise. There's an increased target now that 55% of all projects of, of, of across the bank would mainstream gender um, and be able to reflect this, not only um, in, in the analysis, uh, looking at both macro, uh, meso, and, and community level issues, um, but translate this analysis into concrete actions. And an, an example would be, um, you begin with the question of does the activity identify project-related gaps between males and females, especially in light of the country gaps. So in, in, in a project, you'll find, for example, uh, two dominant gender gaps. Um, women bear the biggest burden in rural water and collecting water, but they're less represented in decision-making. And two, women have less economic opportunities for non-farm-related work. So the action would be, um, we would then say we're going to encourage full participation of women and target a minimum representation of quality and quantity of women's participation in decision making. But also when it comes to the local contractors, they will employ at least 30% of female workers in maintenance, construction and repair works. Um, and that for these works, women would be paid the same as men. And then in the monitoring and evaluation, we would, we would say, uh, let us monitor uh, that uh, among the 30% local labor, female workers will be prioritized, um, and 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 uh, and that in the in the committees uh, we are seeing an increase over the course of a five-year project or a six-year project, an increase in the representation of women in the various water committees that are put in place. So I'll end there.